picture. Listen and enjoy it. I am answering a question that nobody that I have ever heard of has answered. I said, Lord, help me, because this is my subject. Why on earth is there a pyramid on the back of the American dollar? What link-up is there between America and Egypt? Answer, none at all, except in the field of the occult. And if you look at that uh, a pyramid on the dollar, it is one that I have been to three times. In fact, I've been inside it. And we're going to read about it now in Isaiah 19, 19. All together? In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a saviour and a great one, and he shall deliver them. There's a reference to Jesus, you see. He shall send them a saviour. His name is Jesus, the biggest name on my chart. I started preaching this some time ago, and I was home in bed one night. We live at Polaris Bridge in the top of the South Island. I got a telephone call from Christchurch. This man rang up and he said, you Barry Smith? And I said, yes. He said, why do you talk about the pyramid in your meetings? He said, you destroy your credibility. He said, that passage in Isaiah does not refer to the pyramid. I said, what does it refer to? He said, I don't know. So I said, I said, good night. Goodness gracious, the arrogance of the man. I spent all this time putting it together and he didn't listen, he thought he knew. Now, I'm going to share a lot of stuff. This is so exciting, you'll like this. So we're going to finish on a good note tonight. It'll cheer you up. <laughs> what do we know about the pyramid? First of all, we're talking about the pyramid at Giza. Now the pyramid at Giza, G-I-Z-A, it can be spelt G-I-Z-E-H, same thing. And I want you to know that the Pyramid at Giza was not designed by the Egyptians, nor was it built by the Egyptians. It was built by strangers in the land of Egypt. Have a look at this, please. You folks were on the Egypt trip. Remember that? Did you come up on the roof of that hotel with us? Oh, this is interesting. Last year we were over there, and um, we were in this hotel near the Pyramid in Cairo, and I went to the desk I said, could we hire a room for the night, please? to have a meeting about the pyramids, and the lady said, yes, $200. I said, cancel the order, thank you. $200, the cheek of it. I'm not a Scrooge, but I tell you what, I can't stand that. So I said to the people, come on, we sneaked up the stairs onto the roof. <laughs> when we got on the roof of the hotel, there were the pyramids all lit up. And we gave this talk to them sitting on the roof of the hotel next to the pyramids. It's exciting. Now this is a very special pyramid. Let me ask you a question. Has Egypt ever been useful to the people of God or a blessing to the people of God? Yes, in the Old Testament, tell me three people who were blessed. Old Testament. Joseph, Moses, Abraham. Good. It's like drawing blood out of a stone. <laughs> this is the next one. In the New Testament, please. Jesus. Therefore, God has a debt that he is going to pay back to Egypt. He's put something in there that belongs to him. Now what did our verse say? It says, it is unto the Lord, not to Michael Jackson who sleeps under one, or to, I couldn't care less where Michael Jackson sleeps, I'll be quite frank with you. Some people tell me it's an occult symbol. No, it's not. It's unto the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. It is not new age, it's unto the Lord. It doesn't belong to the Freemasons, it's unto the Lord. Now what do we know about it? It's a altar, someone else, it's a pillar, it's a sign and a witness unto the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. Now have a look at this. Designed by God Almighty, the design is so clever, they tell me that you cannot re replicate it. The Japanese have tried to. They tried to build one the same, one third the size, using a computer, but they couldn't do it. Only God could have designed that magnificent structure. It was designed by, and was built by strangers in the land of Egypt. And while the strangers were there, they worshipped one God only, and shut down all the Egyptian houses of worship and temples. Once the strangers left the country, they opened up all their temples again. It was designed on the Pi Principle. Could someone tell me the calculation, please? The Pi Principle, some of you went to school, you understand it. The, the circumference around the base of the pyramid, it has a radius which is halfway across there, is equal to the height of the building. 
And only God could have got the angles right so everything was perfect. They can't replicate it. They've tried and tried and tried, but they can't do it. Remember, pi, P-I, is part of the Greek alphabet, and the Greeks came after the Egyptians, but God had pi before the, Egypt, before the Greeks got it. That's interesting. I think it is anyway. Now have a look at this one. It is visible from the moon. You can't see anything else on earth, just that pyramid. It is one of the seven wonders of the world. It was built with 2.4 million blocks of granite. That's a lot. And it, were, and it was covered with limestone blocks. How many? There were 144,000 limestone slabs. And it was like a giant searchlight. As the sun hit it, the rays shone as far away as Israel. They could see that thing, but uh, robbers have been there and robbed the limestone blocks off it now. <clears throat> it is outstanding in mathematical design. Next. It is located on the border of North and South Egypt. It is positioned exactly north, south, east and west. The, the, it is just so exact. Mathematicians are amazed. The internal passages, uh, there are two of them. One goes up, it's called to the king's chamber. Inside, I've been into that one. Then there's another one goes down to the pit. Now the king's chamber represents heaven and the pit represents hell. That is the end result of everybody's lives. In 100 years, all of us will either be in heaven or hell, depending on what we do at the cross, where Jesus Christ shed his blood to get us to heaven. That's clear, isn't it? Now, if you want to measure inside that thing, because you've got to learn to measure, you'll find out the history of the world is there. It's called a history book in stone. And I was sorry when we moved off uh, the old system to metrics, because I lost one of my best jokes. Listen to it. He that thinks by the inch and speaks by the yard should be kicked by the foot. <laughs> Do you like that one? And so if you want to measure inside the passages, one inch equals one year. Now we're going to put another one on. Watch this, please. Here we go. You're a good man, brother. Were you? It was a good exercise. <laughs> Thank you so much. Would you notice, please, <coughs> there's the ascending passage finishes at the king's chamber, there is the descending passage, finishes in the pit. Now I'm going to draw it for you, here on the board. Here's the pyramid. Notice the ascending passage goes up, there is a room crossing it called the king's chamber, and you'll see there a symbol, a symbol of the cross. Inside the king's chamber there is a coffin or a sarcophagus made of stone with no lid on it, and that speaks of the resurrection. There has never been any body in that thing, they, 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 they claim. It is so big they cannot take it out down the passages because it is bigger than the passages. So that means it was put in there before the thing was finished. God knew exactly what he was doing. <clears throat> it's a special structure with a history of the world in stone. Now, would you notice this? If you measure up the passages, you go one inch up here or a few inches, you'll come to the place where Moses was given the law. You measure a few more inches up there, you'll find the birth of Jesus Christ. You measure a little bit further, you find the crucifixion. You go further, you find the date for World War I. You find the date for World War II and so on. There are many things in there. That's only a few of them. And the final date is the year 2000. Now some of you will be asking the question, why is the final date 2000? And the answer is, we don't know. So... <laughs>